damn 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 I mean what a sad way to to go out in an FA Cup final uh no one wants to hear this right now but I gotta keep it classy and congratulate Leicester City for being one of the only teams who wanted to win this today They've had a project, they've been doing their thing for a while and, you know, it's a very successful one, has a lot of promise and they deserved it. They deserved it. And I'm just thinking, where was the team today? Where was the system? Where was the tactics? Where was Thomas Tuchel today? Because today, you guys, I feel like Tuchel did not help the team out from the start because the irony was the finest of margins the literal finest of margins decided the winner in the game today. Small, small margins in games of this magnitude. Of course, they, they can have some massive impacts. I mean, look at the goal that Leicester City scored from Tielemans. Kepa, 6-1. If he was Mendy's height, you're thinking he has that ball. We have seen the foes. We've seen Mendy deal with long shots like that. And also, you guys, a part of me feels like when teams are playing against Kepa due to his rep, they're normally encouraged to take shots from outside the books, to uh, take shots first time, etc, etc, because, you know, you've got a good chance of, of getting a goal. But, you know, we go on, and one of the most unbelievable, unreal moments, which sums up the finest of margins in this game today, was that VAR decision right in the end. Because, I'm sorry, you guys, I th I, we should be an extra time right now. I don't understand what the hell I, I, I saw. It took me a very long time to process it. Bruv, they got me out here off my seat, dancing like a fool, like a fool, celebrating. Nah, my God, VAR did us dirty today, man. And I, I'm even thinking to myself, okay, how how strong is this tech? Like, the guys from above, when they're using VAR, are they capturing the game in like 60 frames a second, 120 frames, or even more than that? Because I'm sorry, if players can be offside for having a hair follicle, of Saif, for God's sake. You need to make sure that tech is strong, that you can see the minutest of details today. And, wow, well, what I'm about to say now, moving on, is gonna sound just, yeah, like I'm gonna sound like a dickhead. I'll, I'll keep it real, you guys, but did Tuchel not see the details today himself? Um, I feel like maybe, because this is what I'm feeling right now, you guys, I'm gonna, I wanna discuss some of my, Brief criticisms, but at the same time, you guys don't think, oh, I'm too cool out, bring Lampard back, or none of that bullshit or nonsense. Nah, not, not today, you guys. Nah, I can't deal with that nonsense today. But why did Mendy not start? Why did Ben Gio not start over Marcus Alonso in this game? I mean, from how this guy was talking before the game, I thought he was guaranteed to start. Why are we not using him, having his pace on the outside, having his attacking threat? Me personally, there was a few times I'm seeing Ziyech trying to find Alonso in behind. You just know that guy has no pace to really exploit that. That's going to limit what someone like Ziyech can do, for example. Because that's how the details normally all add up. And that's how the details can decide the winners and the losers. You know, I'm looking at that team. I'm looking at the attacking lineup. And I don't know, a part of me has been a bit frustrated with Timo Werner. Now, I get it from a tactical perspective. I get it. His pace is incredible. It's so good that, you know, it gives you such a strong tactical advantage with his runs in behind, stretching defences, um, causing himself a nuance, playing on the shoulder every single time and using his devastating acceleration and pace. It, it helps and it works. But, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, man, but, bruv, Werner's not Mbappe. Werner's not Mbappe where you can play on the break and exploit space in behind because... The moment he gets on the board, unfortunately, I mean, what's he really doing? What is he really doing? I'm not even seeing bare minimums like stepovers, no feints, no shimmies. Literally, it's all one piece. It's all head down most of the time. And in this game today, in the first half, how many times was he, was he picking up the ball in dangerous areas, being able to receive and turn and run and drive? And, and what was he doing on the ball? You know, shots that's not finding itself on the target, not even putting pressure on Schmeichel. Nice runs in behind down that right and silent throughout the game. But then when he's on the ball, it's head down. Oh, poor cutback cross inside the books. Doesn't have enough invention to be able to beat his man. I, I get how it works, but I'm sorry. But how much time is needed to hope that he's going to just... The lights are going to come on and he's going to be that striker. Because, bruv... You know, it's Paris and Germain, you can play that way because you've got Mbappe who's on the board doing stepovers, who's, you know, creating havoc, causing danger. 
And that's another one of my details why the Pulis did not start this game. We saw what he did in the final last season and irrespective of that, his form is back. We're clearly seeing that. And in this game today, can you imagine if Pulisic was on the ball in those areas Werner was receiving, running, driving at Leicester City where, you know, Pulisic comes alive in these moments. And then what happens in the end, bruv? He comes on, maybe gets the player's game for, what, five, ten minutes, if even that. Because afterwards, we force some more attacking players. Leicester City are just parking the bus and we're just playing cross and inshallah inside the book so hopefully find someone I'm not even utilizing the best abilities of these guys when they come on and you know it just sums up what a waste this game was and i don't know i, I just felt like too cool today he could have set the team up better i'm sorry mendy in games i get why but nah you know in big games like this where you need the trophy mendy you start him ben should have started alonso has been good but you what threat was he going to bring today that's what i don't understand what was expected of him? What, to be inside the box and hopefully something falls his way and that's that? I mean, did you see Ben at the end? He forced that moment. He was looking dangerous with the runs in behind. Did you see? When Ben K1, he found the ball three times with balls over the top due to his pace in behind. And that is an attacking avenue we completely denied ourselves because we use Marcus Alonso because he's experienced, one of the senior guys. And, you know, you want to you play parity with the squad now? It's mad, it's absolutely mad. What is even belling me right now, man? But, um, because I'm sorry, man. You know, I just think that at times Werner can maybe hamper and, and, and affect the other players in the team. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to start doing this blame game stuff, which I, which I know I'm sounding like I'm doing right now, you guys. But it, it's a frustration I've had for a while because, you know, I knew this would happen because we haven't been seeing Werner scoring goals. I don't care about the goal contributions, about the assists, winning penalties or any of that nonsense. It's about the goals. That's why we spent over 50 million. And again, today brought no threat, didn't really test Michael enough. And we would have been a much more effective and stronger if players like Kai or Tammy Abraham has been cast aside for absolutely no reason where if he even got the minutes that Giroud is getting in games, you know he'd have more goals than Giroud right now who's done absolutely nothing in two courses so and not even been able to win headers for us. Um, yeah, you guys, this... Uh, you know, I, I, this was definitely Tuchel's mistake and there's two mistakes now after Arsenal and this one, let's hope the pressure's sort of getting to him because we, uh, we really need him. But, you know, it's time to start being a bit brave now. That's what we need to see. Did we have to play with a back through system right nearly to the end? I mean, how many times throughout the season have we been in games like this where we have no threat? The game is cancelled out tactically and, you know, this is where you're hoping there's going to be more bravery to force the, uh, to have some agency, to force the agenda, to do something against them and it just wasn't the case, you guys. But anyway, you know, what is there to even say about this game? You know, as always, as always, it's Mason Mount who's the only one that really brings threat in the team. I'm loving how he's taking more responsibility because someone in this team has to, you know, mounts on the ball, running at opponents more on the half turn, trying to force things. Things, had some great shots and to be honest I thought in the second half that shot against Michael right near the end I thought he had done it that was excellent technique to produce that in that moment what a world-class unreal save from Schmeichel and you know it was moments like that that really typified by you know Leicester City definitely deserve to win this game today um just some very abject performances and you know for me I don't even necessarily blame the players entirely. I just think it was a tactical setup today. You look at the game, I thought both teams really cancelled each other out. Both teams looking to use balls over the top to find their forwards. Uh, Tuchel played Reese James as a right centre back. And, you know, I have to say that it did work. Uh, I thought James really just um, had uh, Vardy in his pocket throughout. He was using his body really well, getting in front of him and shielding that ball. And then it was impossible for Vardy to do anything to receive it. And, it works. I'm surprised why we've only seen it now, why we haven't seen that throughout the season. Many of us have wanted to see James playing as that, uh, you know, right side of centre back. And the irony is, is that when Aspie's playing further forwards, you know, what was really coming from an offensive point of view in that sense? So, you know, it kind of just sums up this, uh, I don't want to say pragmatic, because pragmatic is not necessarily 
a dirty word, but I felt like we paid too much respect to our opponents today. How many games do we see like this where both managers have cancelled each other out tactically and it comes down to what the players are doing and who's going to make it happen, but when we play sometimes, it, it is fully, fully functional. Like the minute Leicester scored, you know, a part of me felt straight then and there that the game was over, to be honest, because I just imagined us, you know, trying to produce efforts from outside the box with crosses, you know, cutbacks, playing wide and doing what we normally do and doing what Lampard was getting criticised for uh, before he was sacked. So, um, it'll be interesting to see how we're going to change this, you guys. But for me, it's about just being brave. We didn't have to use a back three right to the end, right that far in. We re-sign attacking players for a reason. We need their goals and we're using a system that doesn't necessarily believe in free scoring goals. Um, it's one of those games where there's not even too much for me to talk about which is a very big disappointment. You know, in terms of chances, you'd say less had the best ones, and even their chances came few and far. Vardy had a good one that got blocked by James. They had uh, Sionchu from set pieces, who should have done a lot better with what he had as well. And I think our best opportunity again, and uh, what have I been saying throughout this video about fine margins, was when Werner had, uh, you know, deflected that little dink cross from Thiago Silva over Aspilicueta, and if that goal goes in, the game's in our favour because with how we play, then we can control the game from that sense. But again, we just aren't that team that really brings that threat with our attack at times. And, you know, it's interesting that we're in the market now to sign a number nine because it's quite obvious that that is what we need. However, the number nine that has proven over one and a half seasons that we can rely upon him, that players around him play well, no surprise that your Vernons have scored goals around him, your Kai Havertz's have scored goals around him, your ZX, etc, etc. And that is none other than Tammy Abraham. You know, just bringing that competition to Werner, who knows what could have happened. But yeah, I felt like the Werner experiment has kind of slightly fell for me. And that's like one of the main takeaways I have from this game. So you guys, I'll be real. I'm not going to do a player ratings video. I'm just dejected. Um, yeah, I'm just going to chill with the girlfriend hopefully she'll um make me happier and yeah you guys um that was it that was a shit end to the fa cup final and let's hope for better things on tuesday and later on so see you guys later man